I know you guys are probably already back in the office or maybe you're going back to the office soon and here's something you need to remember when you go back to the office. The better the candy on someone's desk, the worse the conversation you're about to have. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you guys don't follow, here's, let me explain. It goes the other way too, because there's some people, terrible candy, great conversations. There's one guy I work with, very funny guy, nice guy. We talk about m movies, music, sports. We have great conversations, but his candy's trash. It's not even candy, it's raisins. It's little dusty boxes of raisins. Because he's worked there for 10 years and no one's ever touched them. You ever hear someone call raisins nature's candy? Yeah, that's why we invented candy. Nature was not getting it done. Nobody wants to win a gold ticket to that factory. Like, oh my God, going to Dole. <laughs> like, Hi, I'm Kevin, I'll be your tour guide today here at Dole. These are grapes. Now we wait. <laughs> In a couple hours, I'll show you how they come out of the box in one big sticky clump. It's disgusting. <laughs> then there's other people, good candy, tough conversations. There's one lady I work with, her name's Charlene. And Charlene, she's a nice lady and her candy is top notch. She's got Skittles in bags, which is important. Because some people will just have loose Skittles or loose M&Ms in a bowl and everybody will put their hands in there and then we have to wear a mask for a year and a half and I don't like it. <laughs> But Charlene cares about people, so she's got Skittles in bags, which I like, but the only thing about Charlene is she's an oversharer. She tells you too much about her life way too quickly. And I didn't know that the first time I went and asked for some candy. I walk over there, I'm like, hey, Charlene, mind if I have a bag of Skittles? And she's like, that's what they're there for, Bill. I'm like, thank you so much. I love Skittles. They're my favorite candy. She's like, they're my favorite candy too, Bill. It used to be Starburst, but that's the favorite candy of my ex-husband that used to beat me. <laughs> casual candy conversation. <laughs> now I gotta stand there and empathize for 15 minutes because I can't just make a joke and be on my way and be like, ah, oh, does he work here? I love Starburst too. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's my nemesis. My nemesis is an older lady named Margaret. And Margaret doesn't just have candy, she's got food, real food. Not, not, not raisins, real food. Because she's got all these kids that have grown up and moved out, and she still grocery shops at Costco like they live with her, so she buys all this food, doesn't know what to do with it, brings it to her work, and keeps it in her office that locks, and she's got everything. She's got those little orange crackers, the peanut butter. She's got granola bars, the soft kind that don't crumble into a million pieces. I don't know what's happening in the Nature Valley, but it needs to stop. Then she's got a little mini fridge with string cheese in it and the yogurt for ladies. I don't know what it does for you ladies, but I'm glad you have it. <laughs> I support your choice to eat that. <laughs> and then in their little mini fridge, she's also got a little freezer. And in the freezer, she's got toaster strudels. Yeah, toaster strudels. Yeah, I know, right? The Pop-Tarts of a two-parent household. <laughs> Some of you guys are having a realization right now, like, oh, we used to have toaster strudels. <laughs> and then we were a Pop-Tart family. <laughs> oh. Do you say nasty? You don't like toaster strudels? No? Oh, you absolutely love toaster strudels. It's like, no, I love both my parents, and they're great. <laughs> I only have to go to one house tomorrow. <laughs> The only thing about Margaret is, though, she's got a little rule. If you take any of her food, you don't just get away with it scot-free. She's got a little quid pro quo. You have to go with her to church. Yeah, I know. And not one of those fun churches that they have, like, in an old movie theater where they're like, come on down. You can wear your pajamas. We don't care. We just want to worship the Lord and listen to music that kind of sounds like the Foo Fighters. It's not the Foo Fighters, but it kind of sounds like the Foo Fighters. <laughs> it's not that kind of church. It's not black people church, that's a fun church. It's old white people church. Those are two very different churches. <laughs> if you ever watch a movie and it's about black people church, they're the good guys in the movie, right? <laughs> they're trying to help a family, they're trying to help the community, maybe save the church. Medea's gonna be there, Whoopi Goldberg might show up. It's gonna be fun. 
maybe a little bit corny, but fun overall. If the movie's about white people church, old white people church, who are they in the movie? They're the bad guys in the movie. They're the ones that are like, you won't be dancing in this town, Kevin Bacon. You do your gymnastics in silence. That's the kind of church that she wanted me to go to because one day I went in there and got some of those orange crackers with the peanut butter and she's like, you know the deal, Bill? Take any of my food, you gotta go to church with me on Sunday. I'm like, I'll see you Sunday. Sunday rolls around, I didn't go to church. Monday, she found me, I was hiding from her, she found me. And uh, <laughs> she cornered me and she's like, hey, Bill, missed you at church yesterday, you said you are gonna come, but you didn't, so I'm guessing you had a good excuse. And I was like, oh yeah, I was on my way. But then Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> And he wanted to go to brunch. <laughs> and I'm like, sign me up, because when you go to brunch with Jesus, you get the drink for free. <laughs> and she goes, oh, Bill, you're so funny to some people. <laughs> yeah. Old white people church is good at passive aggressive, and she got me right in the heart with that one. <laughs> She's like, you said you were going to come to church, but you didn't come to church. And Bill, that's a lie. And a lie is a sin. Sounds to me like you could actually use some church in your life. And I'm like, you know what, Margaret? You're right. I could use some church in my life. I'll see you this Sunday. Sunday rolls around. I didn't go to church again. But what I did do is I became friends with a janitor that has a key to her office. So I just go and take food when she's not there. Because the Lord works in mysterious ways. My name is Bill Squire. Thank you guys all so much for coming out.